Hey everyone and welcome back. Coming up this week, Perplexity celebrates a milestone for a new service that you may not have heard of. New data that suggests that users really don't want some of the AI features that have currently shipped in dating apps. A new conversational AI tool that is honestly one of the best live conversational experiences I've ever tried. Plus the latest data, trends and new tools that you can use. As always, if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. But before all that, Google has unveiled two major new products this week. The first is something called Canvas, which is a new interactive space where you can refine your documents and code that works a little bit like similar offerings from competitors like Claude and GitHub. Documents can be edited directly within the Canvas, and the coding feature allows you to prototype simple prototypes and preview how they look in real time. The second is Audio Overview, and this uses Notebook LM's technology to transform things like your Google Slides, deep research reports, and other documents into podcasts. So after a slow start, it is becoming clear that Google has now firmly caught up with its rivals, with its product teams shipping new releases every week. And speaking of Google, one of its senior directors this week, Ryan Salva, said that he's come to, in quotes, hate the word agents. He thinks that the industry overuses the term agent to the point where it's almost nonsensical, he said. And in an interview with TechCrunch, he said that the term AI agent is one of his pet peeves. But whatever you think of AI agents, companies are still shipping AI agent capabilities. And this week, Zoom announced a series of new AI agent capabilities as part of its Companion 2.0 launch. The new abilities include calendar management, so the ability to schedule meetings, clip generation, and advanced writing assistance. You can also make decisions, solve complex problems, and learn over time. And if you're keen to keep up to date with some of the latest offerings in the AI agent space, then here's a snapshot of other releases that are worth knowing about. In other news, this is the new startup that I mentioned at the beginning, which is a startup called Sesame that has unveiled one of the most impressive AI live voice products yet. In a piece that they published called Crossing the Uncanny Valley of Conversational Voice, the team outlines the technology that underpins this voice assistant, and it's seriously impressive. So you can try a demo of it on their website, and all you have to do is choose the voice that you want to chat to, so either Maya or Miles, and then click to start the conversation. And honestly, this is actually one of the best experiences I've ever had with speaking to an AI assistant. And the vision here is twofold, according to Sesame. They say that they have two goals. The first is to build a personal companion, which is an ever-present brilliant friend and conversationalist that is designed to keep you informed and organized. And the second is to build hardware that is designed to be worn all day. And in this case, the hardware that they're focusing on is lightweight eyewear, which gives you instant access to the companion who can observe the world alongside you. So this is something definitely worth keeping an eye on. Meanwhile, Perplexity's new Ask Perplexity service which you may or may not have heard of, has reached a major milestone this week of 120,000 followers in just two months. So this service works by allowing users to ask it questions on X. And this week saw it attract thousands of new users after it boasted that it had taught itself everything it needs to know about the JFK files. So following Perplexity's announcement of a smartphone collaboration with Deutsche Telekom, an integrated digital assistant for Android, a new browser that's coming soon, and even its own branded coffee, Perplexity's current growth strategy appears to be everything, everywhere, all at once. Now, I understand why it's taking this approach, because as we just saw, the likes of Google are essentially now caught up. But maybe this growth strategy will actually work. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you have any opinions on that. In other news, Duolingo's head of design says that the company is killing the term UX designer. So in this surprising turn of events, the head of UX, Mick Mig Rees, has announced on LinkedIn that the company has changed the term UX design and replaced it with PX, which stands for product design. He said that the reason behind the change is that product drives our business, culture, and priorities. And our function includes product designers, product writers, and product researchers. We gave the umbrella name UX a shot, but it never really stuck. It didn't feel like us. It felt antiquated. So does this mark the end of UX as we know it? Or is this just a a great way of advertising some of the new roles that they've got available. And speaking of industry terms, one term that hasn't gone away in the past week is vibe coding, which continues to be part of the zeitgeist. And if you're interested in learning more about how to use vibe coding to build some mini apps of your own that you can use at work, then check out this week's knowledge series. So in this knowledge series, I explore how you can build your own set of apps, including an OKR tracker that not only keeps track of your company OKRs, 
but then allows you to assign tasks that relate to each of those to different team members, a productivity tool with a difference, and a fun roulette wheel that will help you to decide who should present your next demo. So head over to Substack for that this week if you're interested in building your own apps. And speaking of building your own apps, let's take a look now at some tools you can use. And the first one is something that was vibe coded into existence by a Stripe PM. So this is called Springtime, and it's a DocuSign clone that was built entirely through vibe coding, and it positions itself as a free alternative to DocuSign. So it has all of the functionality that you might expect from a DocuSign clone, including the ability to sign documents and send them to the person that you're entering a contract with. But the difference here, of course, is that it's completely free. So head over to Springtime if you or your company are looking to save some money on SaaS tools like DocuSign. Another tool worth checking out this week is something called Dust. And Dust is specifically focused on helping companies to develop their own AI agents across different departments like engineering, data analytics, analytics, productivity, and more. And it, is, it essentially works by allowing non-technical people to create customizable and secure AI agents that are powered by some of the leading LLMs. Then this week, they announced a new feature called Query Tables, which is a feature that enables AI agents to execute SQL queries on structured data. So if you're looking for ways to query your data that don't involve having to write SQL queries, then Dust could be worth checking out. And the final tool this week is a calendar app called Tweak. And the reason I like this is simply because it's beautifully designed and it does an excellent job of mapping to-do list items with calendar items. And if you take a look at this, the design, it's simply built and it's designed to mimic the experience of using a paper calendar. So if you've ever used one of those paper calendars that you flip the page of every week or every month, then you'll know how satisfying that is. Okay, moving on to some data and trends this week to stay informed. And the first piece of data is that global VR headsets shipments actually fell year to year 12%, which marks their third successive year of declines. We kind of all expected this to happen, but what surprised me was the news that augmented reality smart glasses shipments also dropped year on year. But this report suggests that they are expected to grow 30% in 2025. Meta dominates the market, as you can see here, with a massive 84% share, which is up from 65% in the previous quarter. But with the overall market dying, does it really matter? Apple is said to be doubling down on a new version of Vision OS. And as we mentioned last week, the new iOS is on the horizons too, with new reports suggesting this week that the UI for that will borrow heavily from the transparent layers that are used in Vision OS. Will Meta and Apple be able to turn around this overall market decline? I'm not convinced, but let's see. This week also saw the new state of AI report from McKinsey. And one piece of data that I found quite interesting from this is this data, which suggests that it's getting easier to fill AI related roles. So this report is basically taking a look at how difficult a person at a company said it was to recruit for these specific roles. And as you can see, design and data visualization rank amongst the easiest, which you might expect, and AI compliance officers proving to be the most difficult, which again, is something that we would likely expect at this stage, given how new a lot of the AI regulation is, if indeed it exists at all. Other stats from the report include the finding that 78% of organizations now use AI in at least one business function, which is up from 72% in 2024. Less than 20% of organizations are tracking KPIs for generative AI products, and only 1% of company executives describe their AI rollouts as mature. And speaking of AI features, you probably know that the product teams at dating apps like Hinge, Bumble, and Grindr have gone all in recently on developing new AI features, but crucially, users aren't very convinced. Only 10% of women agree that AI-powered dating apps lead to more successful relationships, which is half that of men at 20%, and just 4% of users said that they strongly agree that using dating apps with AI features will ultimately lead to more successful relationships. So perhaps there's an opportunity here for a new dating app that explicitly introduces a zero AI policy. Check out this study from Boston University if that's something that you're interested in. Meanwhile, if you're interested in learning more about the impact of AI on conversion rates, then this study shows that while businesses have seen a massive 1,200% surge in visits from AI search engines, users from AI sources, visitors from these AI sources are 9% less likely to convert compared to other sources of traffic. And finally, I'll leave you with this, which is news that a SaaS war has broken out between Rippling and Deal over allegations of spying. The lawsuit alleges that Deal placed its own spy inside Rippling, who then orchestrated a, a series of trade secret thefts. 
Now this case is pretty wild and if you want to get some details on this there's a substack called Cautious Optimism that has put together some of the, the core details. As part of the investigation Rippling analyzed its slack logs and you, you can see here that the term deal was eventually searched up to 23 times a day and all of this ultimately culminated in a sophisticated honeypot operation so if SAS true crime is your thing, then this case looks to be pretty interesting to follow. And with that, thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.